Hey guys, welcome back to our work on a 1947 0017 Martin. Yeah, I don't want to lose those escutcheons. You'll remember the first time we saw this guitar, there's a playlist going on up there. You can click that link, it'll also be at the end of the video. But you'll remember when this guitar came in, the top of it was bowed way up. So the bridge had uh, come up on it and we needed to get this back down flat. And we were able to do that with some kind of oddball pressing and steaming techniques. And again, if you have your mouse up there, you'll see that. But now we're at a point where when the body is doing what it's doing and the bridge is doing what it's doing, you go to telling the body, you can't do that. You need to get back down to flat so we can do what we do. Yeah, there's parts in here. Anyway, what we're going to do uh, with this guitar in this episode is you've got some grain separations, some cracks, and some open splits. So we are going to end up going inside of this guitar and fixing those things and well I can't do that talking to you so let's get to the bench okay guys you're not gonna believe this it is raining in California so the song is a lie um, but there's other completely and utterly disamazing things going on we are transitioning is it hard for people to transition well, it depends on what you're transitioning from and to, and it's nice if the things are somewhat remotely even related in complexity or complicity or whatever you want to call it. So here's what we're doing. We're going from working on punkin, punkin, P-U-N-K-I-N, check for tail screws. Ooh, look at that clean one owner smoked out burned out fret markers oh look there's pumpkin himself we're going from working on this the worst pos ever besides all the other ones to we're back onto this martin 0017 from 1947 now you'll remember that we worked on the bridge because the bridge was coming up and the bridge is going to be replaced and this was bowed up so we flattened that down with the flat press do you remember that there's an episode up there on how to make one and then also with this thing I want to show you something I have those pieces of tape on those escutcheons because you'll never replace them people with guitars like this they like the original parts a lot, but what we're going to think about is, remember we opened this up because this crack right here was rising up, and sure enough, by cutting this loose from here, there was a lip on the body right here, so I could balance this right here. This was sticking up, so when we heated up the hide glue and opened this up, suddenly this crack settled down and squatted back down and then that space came up so we've got this crack right here to cleat and then we've got another crack right here that we're going to cleat and we're going to use a little finish trick to work on that so that's what we're going to be working on let me put this back in its case and we'll get a little table set up yeah, Pumpkin, I miss you. I could abuse you and throw you around. These guitars are not that way. Anyway, let's get that in the case and let's get set up to talk about what we're going to need. All righty then. The first thing we're going to do is make a little table here. I want to make sure I preserve this cloth here, but chalkboard, whiteboard. Yeah, look at ES-175 style. Yeah, we can put that right up there and give us a flat work space that lines up with this marvelous camera angle okay we'll get that out of the way first whatever you're going to do whatever i'm going to do it's handled right now there we go i like that better so 
we need to do some cleats. Now, I've been told maple is a good cleating material. I've been told that the thickness of a dime or nickel, based on whatever the application is, is probably good. So, if I go into my tool kit and grab a dime or nickel right here, and I take a piece of this and put it here and use a flattened down pencil and run that dime there, what do you know? I've got the thickness of a dime. I've also been told that the ideal size for this stuff, which I can use as a diamond, I want to know which way the grain is running on the guitar. So when I put a cleat in, I don't want the cleat running the same way. And so I want the grain to run different. So I can basically use this shape as a diamond. I've been told that this is a tad too big. And so, the two-thirds of that size is good for the kinds of cracks that I'm going to be working on here. So, this is one of those situations where I put on my glasses. And metrics are really good about this. Because, look, it says 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 20, 30. So, if I go across here, and this is at 2... Well, two-thirds of 20 is about, call it 18. So I'll come in here at 17 on that end. You know what, I want to do this other side because the marker that tells me what I want to do is on that side. So I'm going to mark there, and I'm going to come down here and mark there and then I am going to simply make a line there. I'm going to take that to the bandsaw and I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to go the other way as well over here and measure off this way and this way and draw a line and cut this down to where it's that much smaller and this much smaller okay once I'm over there I'm just going to take my dime and my pencil and I'm going to go ahead and just do this or I could stack up dimes now and go like this and then I'm just going to put this now I have a guide in my bandsaw we'll talk about we'll pretend this is a bandsaw you put this on the guide you line the blade up and you just do this like so and you'll end up with a number of cleats now some people like the cleats to be pyramid I don't have store-bought cleats some of them like to be rounded off I do know one thing you do not want a cleat this thick on a guitar that's acoustic that was structured and designed to be acoustic you start putting all kinds of things in there it will change the sound I don't know how but it will trust me when you start working on these kinds of guitars you're certainly not working with pumpkin anymore and being quaint is not important anymore now I want to talk to you a little bit about these blocks of wood this is mahogany did you know that African mahogany is labeled that way? It could be a, a number of species of trees, while Honduran mahogany is a little bit different creature. So I think if you're working on a Martin, you might want some uh, Honduran mahogany. Now, let's say you're going to patch a hole in the side. Maybe somebody put in a, I don't know, a jack or something like that, and you're trying to match the side. Wood has different patterns you can see the rings here okay you can see all kinds of things the different three-dimensional parts of a tree the cylinders the ray cells I'm an arborist so I don't want to get into all that but the thing is is the way that the guitar the wood was cut to give you the pattern 
you can kind of find that in a block of wood through experimentation. If you look at this and say, that's not it, that face, and you look at this face and say, no, that's not really it, you may find that cutting this at this angle or this at this angle or turning it on its edge will, will produce a certain cut. And sometimes you've got to experiment and you're going to burn up some blocks of wood. But once you know what that is, label it and the brand of guitar and, and what year and range that was. So again, this is something you can do pretty simple with a bandsaw. You just take it use your guide, mark off, try to get stuff that's true to begin with, but mark it off, and then you just push it through the bandsaw like, like so. Um, you can get some fairly thin wafers. Now, the, the trick to it is sides bend. So you have to be able to wet this. Sometimes you'll take a piece of kid's Play-Doh and push it on the inside of the guitar so you can get the, the radius and, and then bend that around that. Uh, you can use fabric. I, I don't know how many of you have seen me use fabric. So you could put a piece of fabric inside the guitar after it is shaped and glued up and reinforced with hide glue and then use this as a backing to put uh, the piece in that just fell off the floor or whatever. There's a lot of experimentation going on, but take notes. Once you find the magic combination, make a note, mark your wood. Now, the high glue heater is heated up, and I think we're ready to go to work. We're going to need some cleats, and we're going to need some of these magnets. These are Luthier's magnets. They are very powerful. They will either come together or they won't. <laughs> um, actually, there's another magnet right here. See, so they will take your fingers off if you don't watch it. So, see, we're going to need those on top and bottom to hold the cleats like so. We put a, a cleat on here. We can take a piece of tape. We can take uh, needle nose pliers, hemostats, or anything to get this where it needs to be. Raise the cleat up on here on a piece of tape or something. Then on the other side of the guitar on the top, you scoot that over, and that's what will hold the cleat. So we've got a number of these cleats now. We want to take some 400 grit sandpaper and we want to just go like this. Don't do this on a belt sander unless you want your fingernails pulled all the way back. But you're just going to rotate them on each side. You want to make sure they're nice and flat. Do both sides just back and forth like this. Go to the edges just a little bit. You want to make sure that the side that you're going to put down, see that's a nice diamond, the side that you're going to put down is going against the grain. You don't want it running parallel. So do you know which side you're going to be putting in there when your arm won't fit? I do kind of like, um, I didn't say this, don't tell anyone, it's hearsay. No one else heard but you and I that I kind of do like sometimes being able to get inside of the body by putting my arm through the sound hole because when we're working on arch tops we're using dental floss and 10 strings let me sneak around here and grab something you remember the 10 string crack hack yeah, I am literally doing ballet, trying to get through here. But when you have an arch top, you make one of these gadgets. Of course, it's got cork on the bottom. You would put it here. So if there's a crack, you would take a piece of dental floss, run it through the crack, open it up a little bit, and then put a 10 string on it. And so... Um, the string gadget at the end is down in the guitar on a piece of dental floss 
and then you would drill a hole in this cleat right here in the center and then you would put that on the string pull it up through the guitar pull it tight this would be on the inside of the sound board or, or the bottom of the guitar and then you would run the 10 string here pull it all the way up and then use this to pull the cleat up into place don't have to do that on this guitar. I'm not saying that I'm going to abandon arch tops over this. It's certainly handy. Now, I want to tell you something. You're going to want this sawdust, remember? So you're going to get one of your little tins out. And you are going to put the sawdust that you gather here off of these in a tin. Any of them in your quality control extravaganza that you find is very much different than the other ones in terms of thickness. I'm going to pitch those off to the side. We are going to need about six of these for what we're going to do this evening. And I want them all to be about the same. Did y'all quit smoking? Are you hypnotized yet? Welcome to the land where no one has gone before. I have a cleat here. It is on a piece of eighth inch doweling that's wooden. There is a piece of tape here and another piece of tape on the back that is holding this up. What I am going to do is I have a light inside of the guitar. I have a light coming up from the crack so I can see it. And I'm going to put hide glue on here. And I'm going to make sure that this is situated the way that I need it. So... It will be perpendicular, not parallel to the grain, which is running this way, which means I would turn this slightly like so, because I'm going to have to compensate. It's just off to the center. So I'm going to fish this in here like this and get the glue to stick to the point where I can reach in with some other scrap apparatus and pull this off then I will work a magnet over the cleat like so and carefully pick up the guitar and do the magnet on the other side let's go you're watching this live the high glue is hot trust me my fingers will attest to it Wet the brush just a little bit, and voila, get that nice and covered all the way around, but nothing on the tape. There we go. All right, let me get my head in the way here. What do you think, Spy Sperling, of my client? Look, it came back out with no cleat on it. Now it's time to fetch something up in there and make sure the cleat is flat. Okay, this is the fun part. This ruler has no metal. This one does. We don't want this one. Take another wad of tape, sticky side here. And you have to understand the magnets have polarity. This side is the part that the other side wants to attract to. It has to be down because the crack is down. We're going to put this over the top of the cleat. And we're going to do that by putting this like so. Then we're going to stick this in and get this to knock off using our whatever we had <laughs> that we used before. And if that doesn't work, we'll try something else. But we're going to get this like so on top of that cleat. Believe it or not, it is in there. It is on the cleat. Now we're just going to spin the guitar around just a little bit, make sure it doesn't fall off and anything. And we're going to put that other magnet there. It's going to grip it through the cleat, through the guitar through the wood and we'll know when we hit it because this 
will suddenly become free because the magnet is stronger than the tape. It's just that sharp. And there you have it. So I want to put two more cleats on. They're the same thing, except now it's just easier for me to slide the magnet. I can reach this one and slip it in there. I can use the same trick. Get it over. Again, check polarity. You don't want to go through this because this one attracts here, but when you flip it over, it pushes it away. This has to be down. So I'm going to put a piece of tape on the side that needs to come up. That'll be the top side. The cleat ends up having to be here on this side once I get it in place. I can get it in place with all my little eighth inch rods and whatever other kind of mess I got going on here. But two more to go. Oh, one more thing. Don't be afraid to use a tenth of a cent of tape for, for the cleat because you don't want glue dropping around in there. So you just get, again, do all your prep work up front. Remember, we wanted that to be just off center a little bit like that. Put our glue in. Put the magnet on it. Good to go. Okay, believe it or not, there are two magnets right there. And you can tell where they are. They're right over the cleats. So, I think what we will do is we will put a tad bit of glue on the crack. We do not want to mess with anything that's going to move those cleats, but we do have our little suction cup, and we know when we use the suction cup to push stuff down, we don't pump it up and down because when you pump it down, it pushes the glue in, but if you pull it up the same way you push down, what ends up happening is the glue sucks back out. So if you get suction this way to push down, the same thing is going to happen. And a little bit of glue, and I'm going to work that in, and we're going to leave this alone for the evening. Now, I've put a piece of paper toweling in here just in case anything drips. We don't want consequences of spots of glue. This is not pumpkin. We take a little bit of water and put it on there. Water's warm. And then we're just going to take that suction cup like so and push down and pull off down and pull off not up and down do not do up and down it'd be handier if those magnets weren't there but they are and we'll catch that piece later we want to make sure that everything is gluing up nice while those cleats are doing what they're doing of course we're going to clean off our brush a little bit and then come along here at that edge there we don't need any more cleanup later than is required. There we go. Waiting for hide glue to dry. Story of our life. Okay, let's get our angle right. We're going to put a bean bag right underneath there. Everything's nice and stable. This workstation is a must-have when you're working on pricey guitars. Anyway, got a piece of binding tape here. 
which is good stuff. Know the tackiness of your product so you're not stripping finish off. And let's get that in there where we need it. You'll remember that we actually loosened this end up a little bit right here. So in hopes that we could get this crack to squat down. So while things are still a little wet here, we took it over to this area here. We're going to take our guitar Botox machine here and we are going to work hide glue into there. You see it oozing out. Okay, you see that? Here we go. I'm going to take this. And these palette knives are great. You see that? I'm just going to work that in there until we feel it binding up or hitting the curving. There we go. We don't want to mess in there where it's squirting all over the place. But we want to make sure. That area here, there we go. Go pull that one up just a little bit. Same thing over here. And of course, our friend the suction cup. Take this and just. We're not pumping up and down, please, guys. Don't fall for that. You're just trying to push it in there, like so. There we go. Now, if there's a little bit. Sticking out here, a little tiny bit of that lip we're trying to get out is still there. Not a big deal because we can fill that. Somebody told me, you know what, you can put stuff on. So why would you take part of the original thing away when you can just put something on? Makes sense now. Where's my pointer? Chick flick teal pointer is not ready for this kind of work yet, but we'll give him a break right up there, right about now. I told you how to make your own spool clamps. I want you to notice that I have thread protectors and, and cork on wood spools. So now I'm just going to come along. And we're not going to crush anything, but we're going to come over here until it's snug like that. Make sure your guitar is secure. You don't want it falling off. And then we're going to put one of these right over the top of where that comes together right there. See that? That's going to be right in the middle, like so. And then finally, one right there. We want to make sure that that threads 
the threads of this thing are not in contact with the guitar. There you go. Easy money. Okay, guys, welcome to the time where hide glue has dried and we pull off these fancy spool clamps. I think we've got some success here. Remember that the split or crack was rising. It had some glue sticking up from a previous repair. And so with the advice of a sage individual, we cut this part of the body loose and then did some steam work. And this leveled out. It's no longer up anymore. And this, there used to be a ridge right here that I could basically put a dime on and it would stay, but not quite a dime. Anyway, we fixed all that. Now, let's take a look at the next little challenge here. I think I got the camera angle right. Let me look here. There is an offset right there. Um, you can hear that. It's more like a grain separation than a crack. And if you look in here, there is a brace running right here, right adjacent to this. So, um, do I want to cleat it and pump hide glue in there? No. What I want to do, and this is going to be a little bit touchy to show you all the angles, so I'll, I'll just explain it. There's some bracing in here that's going to help us inside the guitar. So, I'm going to take a piece of bracing, or a piece of a cutoff, cigar box, Patron box, and I can set it across uh, the span of a couple braces in there. Then, I can take this handy little jack here, you see this? And it goes up and down. And then I can take a piece of blue tape, I can put it on the jack in the right spot, and then I can put the edge of this top piece of scrap floating the, the lower side of that offset and, tight, and tighten this up just slightly and get that level. And then I can go in with the techniques we've seen earlier. I can reach inside of there and I can put one cleat on it and leave that sit overnight and then we'll do some finish work on it and we won't have to pump high glue down in there. Now I'm situating the guitar where the end of the uh, guitar is off the edge of this improvised box that I have here because I'm going to let those magnets hold that hide glue on that big crack in place as long as possible and then I can go in from here and do the work I need to do on that other offset. I can feel it right there. This one is going to be a lot easier. There we go. Now I'm going to try to line this up if at all possible. You should be able to look inside where I shine that light and that split is right there behind that brace. You should be able to see it. So that split is running off of the center bracing just a little bit there, and it runs between the brace that's running across and the one that's below it. Can you see it there? All right. Okay, I have the jack in here, and it is in a good space. Um, it's a little off, it's a little uh, that way of the offset, which is down below, but I've got, I've got everything in here the way I need it, and what I'm doing is I'm jacking this side which is where the low side of the offset is so I'm just gonna you see I've got the jack knob out here and I'm gonna turn this very carefully listen do you hear that and I'm down here and I can feel that offset the side that's low coming up just a tad. There we go. 
you really don't want to take it and start jacking around on the stuff. So what we're trying to do is move the wood a little bit. Now I'm going to take my hide glue and I can reach in there with this and get this on there. And then I can take one of my numerous luthier magnets that I have here. And again, you want to make sure that the polarity is marked right on these things because you'll end up moving in there and trying to get this right. And then you'll find out, oh, I've got it the wrong way. And now the, now the polarity is kicking back. So this side needs to be up facing me if I'm going to put the... These things are strong, very strong. You have to slide them off. So I'm going to put this on here, and then I'm going to take another little piece of tape and get this on here, and then get the hide glue on there, and then put this down, and then slide this up from underneath and put it right in the middle of that and let everything dry up overnight. Okay, polarity side is marked. Little piece of rolled up painter's tape. Cleat on there like so. Hide glue. Notice I'm not getting it all over and slopping it everywhere. There we go. Now I'm going to take this with my fingers, which I can get down in there, like so. Get jack handle out of the way. I need to make sure that I've got everything turned the right way. Remember, we don't want the grain perpendicular, or we want it perpendicular, not running with everything. There we go. That's the best side. And perfect. And we'll put this you know what, we'll put a piece of tape on here just for the sake of nothing so it doesn't scratch up the guitar like so. And then we'll come in from underneath and we will say, okay, look at that. I can see in here that this, if my light is in the right place, that this... Turn that just a little bit. Perfect. All right. I think we're in pretty good shape here, except a little bit more work to do on the inside. Um, there's a brace in here that concerns me, and that is going to take us into the next episode on this guitar. But before we get ahead of ourselves, I want to tell you that there was an offset right here uh, that we braced up. And I think we're going to be able to use finish to kind of level that back out. I'm real happy with the way these that crack worked. That was a wide open crack and we opened up the body here and took advantage of the fact that the body had pulled in a little bit here. So this coming down pushed everything out. I'm happy with that. And um, the separation line where the two halves of the body come together, that's working out good. So in the final finish of the guitar, um, we are going to take care of those things to make them look presentable. Don't want to get way out into the future, but we got that to deal with, and that's its own monster. So, we close this out. 
um, I enjoy working on this guitar. The more I know about this guitar, especially coming out of the world of junk arch tops that were just blown out by the hundreds and thousands, um, I can appreciate this, um, even though I don't know what it sounds like because I can't play a guitar. Anyway, guys, thanks for hanging in here with me. Um, and I guess I'll just see you next time when we get into something in here that you don't really want to see. You know you do, but I guess you don't. <laughs> anyway, I will see you next time. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you haven't. And again, the playlist is up here, and I will stack everything that we've done with this guitar into that playlist.